forest lived a rabbit, wandering all day long. All he did was jump up and admire himself. He loved talking about how much faster he was than the other animals. I'm the fastest animal in the forest. Would anyone like to race with me? He sure did run fast with his very big feet. The other animals hated the way he would show off. In saying that, they never ever won a race. Yes, I win again. Why? Because I'm fast. Everywhere he went, he would say, "I'm so fast, no one could ever pass me." His words had begun to disturb all the other animals in the forest. Okay, he might be the fastest, but the fact that he says and shows off about it's not nice. Someone should teach my lesson to smarten up. All that was said amongst all the animals in the forest managed to go to the turtle. The turtle walked very slow. It would take him a day to reach the distance the rabbit could make in a minute. The turtle wished he would come across the rabbit one of these days. He went to the other animals and told them that he would like to race with the rabbit. You want to race him? Not even the fastest animals have won against the rabbit. How can you? You leave that part up to me. The turtle went next to the rabbit. Good day, Mr. Rabbit. I have been searching for you. Curiously, the rabbit asked. And why might you be looking for me? I hear that you are the fastest animal in the forest. Well. Actually, that's what you think. But to be sure, I would like to race with you. Let's see who is faster. As soon as the turtle had finished what he had to say, the rabbit began to laugh so hard that all the other animals in the forest heard him. <laughs> you <laughs> with me? <laughs> A race? <laughs> Are you joking me? It's impossible for you to pass me. By the time you take a step, I would finish the race. Well, unless we race, we will never know, will we? Okay, be ready then. Tomorrow morning we race. As the turtle began walking away, the rabbit continued on laughing. <laughs> the following morning, the animals arrived at the race course. They noticed the turtle waiting at the starting line, all ready to go. Very sure of himself, the turtle was smiling. Please tell me how you're going to beat the rabbit. If he really is so proud and the big show off, as you all say he is. Then this race isn't going to be hard at all. Soon after, with his very stuck-up attitude, holding a carrot, the rabbit arrived at the race course. Let's race and finish this. I still haven't had breakfast. Finishing their last preparations, they arrived at the starting point. The first one that arrives at the red line at the end of the forest wins. With the mark of the mole, the race started. Just like an arrow, the rabbit flew by. The turtle, on the other hand, began to walk slowly. Whoa! The rabbit was nowhere to be seen. Animals watching the race thought that the turtle was going to get beaten. After running a while, the rabbit stopped and had a look behind him. There was nothing to be seen. By the looks of it, the turtle will finish the race tonight. I better sit and finish my carrot. The rabbit finished eating his carrot, looked up the road, and from afar he saw the turtle coming. With a cheeky grin, he stood up and continued on running. The rabbit had nearly reached the finishing point. I'm a 
bit sleepy after breakfast. I might sit under this tree and take a nap. As confident as he was about winning the race, the rabbit drifted off to sleep. The turtle continued on walking very, very slowly, but with great confidence. At last, he arrived next to the rabbit. He saw that the rabbit was in a deep sleep. Without stopping, he continued on his way. A while later, the rabbit woke up. When he looked and could not see the turtle... The turtle is nowhere to be seen. Maybe he doesn't want to race anymore. <laughs> I should finish my race now. As the rabbit was slowly making his way to the finishing point, what does he see? The turtle had passed him. In fact, he was about to finish the race. Using all the energy he had left over, he tried to pass the turtle. But the turtle had already finished the race. Some of the animals waiting at the finish line were extremely happy. All the animals were throwing the turtle up in the air with great excitement. While the rabbit stood in the corner with great sadness. Turtle, the winner of the race, Walk towards the rabbit. Mr. Rabbit, the important thing is being consistent about everything that you do. To brag with nonsense and love yourself is weakness. I beat you not because I was faster, but I was wiser and did what I did seriously. <laughs> You're right. From now on, I will stop bragging about being the fastest amongst everyone. I should return now. My home is a long journey away. The turtle smiled and continued on his way. The rabbit learned a good lesson and noticed his mistake. After that day on, he never ever bragged about himself, nor did he ever race again. Once upon a time, the animals in a farm were left with no food. The little red hen decided to wander around the field to look for something to eat. She first went next to the cow. Will you come with me around the field to find something to eat? No, I won't. It's too hot. I can't be bothered to walk. She then went next to the pig. Will you help me find food? No, I can't come. It's too hot and I can't be bothered to move. Later then, went next to the dog. Will you help me find food? No, I can't. It's too hot and I can't walk when it's hot. And in the end, went next to the duck. Will you come with me to find something to eat? No, I can't. It's too hot. I can't get out of the water. When nobody bothered to come with her, the hen decided to leave the farm on her own. As she walked, she found some wheat grains on the ground. She was very happy. She returned to the farm. She decided to plant the wheat grains. She thought that her friends would help her. Cow, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I already told you it's too hot. The hen went over to the pig. Pig, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I can't. The weather is way too hot for this. She then went next to the dog. Dog, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, it's way too hot. And at last she went next to the duck. Hey, duck, I found some wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I can't. I can't leave the water in this heat. Well, I'll plant them myself. When she saw that no one wanted to help her, she decided to plant them herself. 
Weeks had gone by. The rainy days had begun. The seeds had sprouted, but all the wild grass in the garden needed some cleaning. Who's going to help me clean the grass? It's too muddy now. I can't help you. I'm not up to it. I won't leave my spot. I'll get dirty. Can't do it. Don't feel good today. I can't help. In that case, I'll do it on my own. The little red hen began to clean the wild grass amongst the sprouts. Not long after, the wheat began to grow. It was now time to harvest the ripe wheat. The hen went next to her friends and asked if they would help her harvest the crop. Hey cow, buddy! Wheat has grown. Will you help me harvest the crop? No, I can't. Hey pig, guess what? The wheat has grown. Will you help me harvest the crop? No, I can't. I won't. Hey, my body dog. The wheat has grown. Will you come and help me harvest the crop? Who, me? Of course not. Hey, ducky, ducky. The wheat has grown. Will you help me harvest the crop? Of course I can't. Okay, I'll do it on my own. The little red hen worked till night time. She harvested the wheat kernels one by one, all by herself. It was now time to turn the wheat to flour. Off she went to ask for help from her friends. Hey guys, we must grind the wheat to make flour. Who would like to help me? I can't help. It's time for me to give milk. I can't move from my spot. I can't help either. It's nap time for me. I can't help at all. Can't help. Need to get into the water and cool down. The hen ground the wheat in the mill and turned it into flour. Now let's make some delicious bread. The hen went next to her friends and wanted to give them one last chance. Cow, I'm going to make bread. Would you like to help me? No, I can't. I'm in no situation to work. What about you, pig? <sighs> Not today. I'm too tired to help today. No, no, I can't. No, I can't. And besides, I don't know how to make bread. This time, the hen was very angry. All by herself, she went to the kitchen. First, she made bread with the flour she had grounded. Then, she gave it a form. And at last, put it in the oven and waited for it to bake. After the amazing smell of the bread had spread, she took it out of the oven, went out to the garden and sat on the table. Later, called out to her friends. Hey guys, the bread is ready. Who would like to eat it with me? Seeing the amazing bread in front of the hen, in a flash they all went next to her. No, I want some. Oh, me too. Right when I'm so hungry. Great timing, hen. Hey, me too, hen. I love bread. Come on, let's eat. No, I can't. I can't. I did everything on my own. Only I deserve to eat it all on my own. With great appetite, the hen began to eat her bread, but couldn't handle the fact that her friends were so hungry. From now on, if you promise to help, I will share my bread with you. All the farmyard animals were ashamed and sorry. They knew she was right. We, we promise, promise you, hen, no more no no laziness. The hen knew her friends learnt a good lesson, so she shared her bread with them. With an amazing appetite, they were now so happy with a full tummy. Once upon a time, while the summer was still blooming, the animals living in the forest the birds and the insects were making the most of the summer and of course they had no trouble finding food. It 
was an ordinary day for the lazy grasshopper. He was eating the roots of the herbs he had picked whilst playing the violin and singing under a tree. Oh, what a lovely day! La la la, play and sing along with my violin. And I don't know the rest of the words to the song, but it's okay! When he finished his ear bleeding song, he heard a noise and listened carefully. In order to understand where and who the noise was coming from, he quickly jumped up high onto the branches of the tree. And right there, he saw from a distance an ant trail. They were marching like soldiers. With great difficulty, the ants were carrying seeds and dry fruits that had fallen off from the trees. The grasshopper jumped to the ground and as confused as he was, he watched the trail of ants disappear. I never seem to get these ants. They're always working. Right at that moment, he noticed an ant coming his way. The ant was trying to carry a seed much bigger than himself. Just as he was passing the grasshopper, the ant dropped the seed he was carrying. In fact, he needed to rest. The grasshopper stared at him with meaningless eyes. Are you moving somewhere? Now? Don't tell me there is a big disaster approaching. Is that why you're running away? Now! Well then, may I ask what you're doing? We are carrying food to our nests. Rightio, you must be expecting a lot of visitors tonight then. Mmm, we are storing food for winter. You're storing food for the winter? What for? And besides, why the rush? There's still a long time for winter. Have fun, just make the most out of the summer. Is that so? So what do you suggest we do for winter? I'm sure we'll find something fun to do, don't worry. All you ever think about is fun. What will we eat, I'm asking you? I'll think about that when winter starts. Now it's summer and there's plenty to eat everywhere. The ant had enough listening to the lazy grasshopper's nonsense and tried to put the seed on his back once again. I must keep up with my friends. Will they help me to put the seed on my back? A singer and an artist like me shouldn't carry such heavy things. After hearing such an answer from the grasshopper, the ant gave the grasshopper a rather interesting look and continued to try and put the seed on his back. I suppose I could give you a little help. The grasshopper picked up the rather small seed off the ground and placed it on the ant's back. The ant thanked him and continued on his way. What a useless and empty effort. The grasshopper continued to lay under the tree. After having something small to eat, he continued to play his violin. Oh, what a lovely day! La la la! I play and sing along with my violin, and so I couldn't make up the rest. La la la! la right la, at that la, moment, la, a squirrel la, 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 took his head out la, of the tree. La, 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 enough, enough! Please, it's enough! Go and sing your song somewhere else. I'm trying to rest here. The instant the grasshopper stopped his singing, he took a glance at the squirrel, grabbed his violin, and he took off. They don't know how to appreciate an artist in this forest. As the hot summer days continued, the ants continued on carrying food to their nests, while the grasshopper continued to eat, walk around, have fun playing his violin, and sing. Finally, the cold winter had arrived. One morning, when the ants woke up, they had a look outside from their nests and saw that everything was covered in white snow. All the little ant could think of was the other animals living in the cold, freezing and hungry. On the other hand, Due to all the plants being covered with snow, 
The grasshopper hadn't eaten a single thing for days. He was shivering, had lost all his strength, and wasn't able to play the violin or sing. With great strength, he was trying to walk on the snow. Suddenly, he thought about the hot summer days. How nice were those days! Everywhere was covered in food. I had a full stomach. I was always happy. At that moment, he thought about the ant. He carried food to his nest all summer long. Later, he realized he didn't like this idea. He had made fun out of him during the summer. Would he help him now? He wondered. And now it was way too cold for the grasshopper to walk. It's no time to be proud. I have to find the ant's nest and ask for help. He headed straight to the ant's nest. He stood in front of the door and yelled, "Is anybody there? Please help!" Who is it? From the nest, he heard a noise. The grasshopper, with his last strength, answered, "My dear friend, ant, it's me, grasshopper. Please take me in." By this time, hearing all that was being said, the queen ant. Approached the little ant. What's going on? Who wants help? Just a lazy grasshopper that sits around, sings all day, my queen. I think he is hungry and seeks help. Anyone who ends up at our doorstep and seeks help should not be rejected. The queen and all the other ants approached the front door of the nest and opened it. The grasshopper was there, lying down on the snow because he had no strength anymore. The ants immediately picked the grasshopper up and carried him into the nest. The grasshopper came to himself thanks to the warmth of their nest. They gave him water and food. Now he was feeling much better. The grasshopper thanked the queen and walked next to the little ant. I have been very unfair to you. While you were working all summer long, I sat down and just sang. And actually, you warned me, but I did not take you seriously. I regret that. This should be a big lesson for you. We also would like to have fun all summer long, but we do have to think about the future too. If we did not get our food during summer, we might have been in the same position as you. The grasshopper stayed in their nest for a while. He was now much better and healthier. When it was time to go, the ants gave the grasshopper some food. Thank you for everything. You saved my life, and I will never forget that. And I will never be lazy from now on. Can I ask for a favor? Sure. Tell me. What do you like? Um. When it's summer, you can take music lessons, learn to play the violin, and make all the other animals happy. Maybe. <laughs> In a forest lived a rather rickety mouse. He was so afraid of the fox, the wolf, and even himself, for that matter, that if the wind blew and a branch cracked, he looked around for a hole he could hide in. Because of this, all the little animals made fun of him. <laughs> How scared is he? You're even scared of the wind. You're so scared. You're, You're so, so scared. scared. You're so scared. <laughs> One day, the mouse got his act together and went over to see the king of the jungle, the lion. The lion had just finished having his lunch. He was taking a nap in front of the cave. The mouse's friends were all curious as to what the mouse had planned. The mouse started to climb up the lion's tail. He got up on the lion's back. With a very confident look on his face, he posed to his friends. Although he was very scared, he was doing everything in his hand not to make it obvious. Right at that moment, the lion woke up, 
and as he shook his fur, the mouse fell off. The mouse and the lion came eye to eye. All the other animals were worried. Oh no, the lion will swallow the mouse! What nerve, what courage. What are you doing on my back? <laughs> Kick out the jungle. Please don't eat me. Uh, I'm the most scared and the most vulnerable of them all. But life passes on my shaking with fear. <laughs> if a leaf falls off of the tree, I'm scared. I'm fed up with this. I want to get rid of this fear. You're the king of the jungle. With just one big roar, the animals fear you. Would you consider taking me to your custody? The lion listened to the mouse in silence. The mouse was wondering what his reply was going to be. <laughs> And why should I help you? Give me one good reason as to why I shouldn't eat you. Your help will be returned, I promise. Maybe one day I will help you. As soon as the mouse finished what he had to say, the lion roared in such a way. How can such a tiny mouse as yourself be of any help to me? But seeing the tiny mouse shaking in front of him, the lion decided not to eat him. Thank God I am full. Now get out of my sight. The mouse ran and got away from there. Watching all that was happening from afar, the friends of the mouse were really surprised. Some time had passed by, the lion got hungry and started wandering around in the forest. But he could not notice the hunter's trap and got caught. He was hung in the air in a big net. He tried to break free from the net, but he could not do it. He was the king of the forest, so if he could yell for help, he would be humiliated. And all the hunters would hear him and come to get him faster. Being out of options, he began to wait. Meanwhile, the other animals living in the forest noticed the lion. But nobody could dare get close to him. When he was passing by, Little Mouse saw the lion and he decided to help him. He went directly next to him. He started to climb the lion's long tail and when he reached the net, he began to chew on it. moment the bunny came running next to them hey buddy hurry up the hunters are coming the other animals who were gathered around suddenly started to run around when they heard the word hunter but the mouse kept on chewing with persistence in the end the net was torn apart and the lion fell down and got away come on jump on my back let's get out of here the mouse jumped on the lion's back and they got away from there all breathless the lion arrived in front of his cave he kneeled down and the mouse jumped off when you told me that one day you might be able to help me i underestimated you I thought you were a tiny mouse with no use at all. But you saved my life. Thank you. It's my pleasure, my king. You don't have to be afraid of me anymore. In fact, you do not need to fear anything because you're a very courageous mouse. If I am the king of the jungle, from now on, you are my courageous prince. Lion and the mouse began to laugh. <laughs> All the animals.
animals watching all that was happening from afar came out and applauded the courageous mouse. The lion and the mouse became best friends, and the forest lived in peace forever. Once upon a time, there lived three piglets with their mother in a small house. It was time for them to leave their home and learn to live on their own. Their mother called the three piglets next to her. My dear children, the time has come for you to go out into the world. Go and start your new lives. But don't ever forget, whatever you do in this world, do the best you can. This is the only and the best way to stay alive. A little sad, with a bit of excitement, the three little piglets said their goodbyes to their mummy, and were on their way. After a while, they found some piece of land where they could build their own home. The youngest piglet was determined to build his home with straw. He thought this was the easiest and the fastest way to build a home. That way, he had heaps of time to play. The youngest of them all finished his house in one day. He yelled out to the other piglets, "Hey, you guys! I'm already finished!" The eldest piglet had a look. At the house. Okay, but this house doesn't look steady at all. How will we protect ourselves from the wolf? The youngest piglet didn't take any notice of his brother. Don't worry, nothing will happen. Okay, don't say I didn't warn you. The middle piglet decided to make his house out of wood. From the branches he had collected in the woods, he decided to build a little cubby house. His house took exactly three days to finish. This house was a bit more steady than the one with straw. The eldest piglet walked over towards him.、Uh, "My dear brother, you've done a great job, but this doesn't look safe at all. Is this house going to protect us from the wolf?" The middle piglet answered, "Don't worry, this house is very safe." Okay. Don't say I didn't warn you. While the two little piglets were having a great time in their newly built homes, the eldest of them all was constantly working, because he was building a home from bricks and rocks. The other piglets thought that his effort was useless. All they did was play around and kill time. Why would you bother with this when you can quickly finish like we have? Hey, how scary is it? The eldest piglet didn't bother listening to them. He worked for one whole week and managed to finish his house made out of bricks and rocks. A day later, a hungry wolf arrived near their home. He first stood in front of the house made of straw. The little piglet was resting in his house. Made of straw, the wolf knocked on the door. Open the door and let me in. If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. You can't do anything to me. My house is steady enough. And so the wolf huffed and puffed, and he blew his house in, but with great effort. The little piglet managed to get away, and off he ran over to his brother's house made from tree branches. He knocked on the door, and when the middle piglet opened the door, the little piglet threw himself inside the house. Hey, close the door! The wolf can come in here. Don't worry, he can't do anything to us in this house. After a while, the wolf came by the second piglet's wooden house and yelled inside. Open the door and let me in. If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. You can't blow my house in. And so the wolf puffed and puffed, and he blew his house in and brought it down. Both piglets ran to the third piglet's house and barely got away from the wolf. Brother, the wolf is going this way. What are we gonna do? 
The oldest piglet answered, very sure of himself. Uh, don't worry, uh, the wolf cannot come in this house. A little later, the starving wolf came by the third piglet's house of bricks and stone and yelled to the three piglets. Open the door and let me in. If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. Don't you even try, you bad wolf. You cannot come in this house. The wolf got very angry. He huffed and puffed, but nothing happened. He could not bring his house down. He tried and tried, but he couldn't move one single brick. Finally, being exhausted, the wolf decided to try another way to go in. He saw the chimney up on the roof and started to climb. Realising that the wolf was going to climb up on the roof and come down the chimney, the piglet quickly lit up the fireplace right under the chimney and put a big bucket of water on the woods. The wolf barely climbed up the chimney and threw himself in and went straight into the boiling bucket. Oh, help! Help, I'm burning! Save me! Oh, help! Finally, being free from the wolf, the piglets hugged each other with joy. The three piglets went to their mother's house the next day to tell her all that had happened. The youngest one came next to his mother. You were right, Mummy. Whatever we did in this world, we have done it to our best. If you really work for something, it will be a success. From that day on, the two piglets were never lazy. They worked hard like their big brother and lived a happy and safe life. Once upon a time, in a little cottage in the woods, lived a mother goat and her little goats leading a happy life. The little goats were very cute. They all were like toys. Mother goat, like all mothers, loved her little goats very much. She protected them from all the wild animals in the forest. One day, before she left the house to find food in the forest, she called her little goats next to her and... My dear children, I am going into the forest. Do not open the door for anyone. If the wolf comes into the house, he will eat all of us alive. He's very shifty. He will disguise himself into different shapes and try to fool you. So how will we recognize him? The wolf has a rough voice and I have a soft and sweet voice. So you can recognize him from his low and rough voice right away. Right when she was leaving, the mother goat remembered something else. She turned to her little goats. Ah, one more thing. The wolf's feet are black and mine are white. You can also recognize him from his feet. Don't worry, mother. We can protect ourselves. You can count on us. Mother goat kissed her little goats one by one and headed into the woods. The wolf was watching them from afar. When he saw Mother Goat leaving, he waited a while, and then he came in front of the cottage and knocked on the door. Who is it? Little goats, open the door. Your mother is here. I brought nice food for you all. But the little goats recognized the wolf's rough voice right away. Without opening the door, they yelled out. You're not our mother. Her voice is sweet and more beautiful. You're the wolf. You can't fool us. The wolf got very angry because he could not fool the little goats. So he went to the shop, bought a big piece of chalk and ate it. Now his voice sounded much softer. So he went back to the cottage and knocked on the door again. This time the wolf started to talk with his soft voice. My little goats, open the door, it's your mother. I brought food from the forest for all of you. Hearing the wolves, 
Soft voice, the little goats thought that it was really their mother this time. Just when they were about to open the door, one of them shouted, Wait, wait! Let's look at the feet from underneath the door. Of course, when the little goats looked from underneath the door, they saw the wolf's black feet. So they yelled again without opening the door. We will not open the door for you. Our mother's feet are not black. They are white. You're the wolf. As furious as he was, the wolf left. This time, he went to the bakery. When the baker saw the wolf in front of him, he was very surprised. I'm a vegetarian now, so I will eat pastry from now on. Could you give me some flour? The wolf came out of the bakery with a little sack of flour. When he got near the cottage, he opened the sack and poured all the flour on his feet. Now his feet were all white. The shifty wolf knocked on the door for the third time. My little goats, open the door. It's your mother. I have brought food for all of you from the forest. First show us your feet so we know it's you, mother. The wolf showed them his feet with flour. When the little goats saw the white feet, they believed that it was their mother and opened the door. And what did they see? The wolf was standing right there in front of them. The little goats did not know what to do. They started to run around yelling. <laughs> Don't waste your time. I will catch all of you. One of the little goats went under the desk. The second one into the bed. The third one into the chimney. Fourth kid hid in the kitchen. The fifth one got into the closet. The sixth hid behind the curtain. And the seventh kid went into the giant clock on the wall. But the shifty wolf was quick, and one by one he caught them all from wherever they were hiding. Run! Run! Come here! Don't run! I will catch you all! I said stop! The only one he could not find was the one hiding in the clock. He was already full, so he gave up on looking for them and head out. There was a big yard a little further from the cottage. The wolf lay under a tree on the yard and started to sleep, snoring. Short while after, the mother goat returned home. When she saw the door open, she knew something bad had happened and started to scream. When she entered the house, she was shocked. The tables and chairs were all upside down. Curtains were torn. The beds were all messed up. The pillows and sheets were all on the floor. Mother Goat looked for her little goats but could not find them anywhere. She started to yell out their names one by one, but not one answered. Finally, it was time to call the last one's name. Only then she heard a high-pitched voice. I'm inside the grandpa clock, mommy! Mother Goat ran to the grandpa clock and took her kid out of there. Mother Goat and kid hugged. The little goat started to tell the story, crying. The wolf came in disguise and we thought it was you and opened the door. The wolf ate all my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Goat was very upset. She cried for her little goats. With only one of her kids remaining, she walked out and started to go towards the yard. After a while, they saw the wolf sleeping under a tree. He snored so bad that the branches of the tree were shaking. Mother Goat observed the wolf for a while. She realized that inside his tummy, some things were moving. Oh my God! Can it be that my goats are in his tummy and they're still alive? She had a plan. She turned to her kid. Run home, bring me a needle, thread and the scissors. 
When the little kid was running home, Mother Goat collected six big rocks from the floor. After a while, the little goat came back with a needle, thread, and the big scissors. Mother Goat cut open the wolf with the scissors. She saw one of her little goats right away, and then the other ones started to appear one by one. They were all healthy. Mother Goat couldn't stay still from the joy she had. All the little goats hugged their mothers with joy. Mama, mama, we love you. They were all full of joy. Ah,、oh, my little goats, you're safe. Mother goat put the rocks she collected carefully inside the wolf. Then she stitched his tummy with the needle and thread. The wolf was sleeping so deep he did not feel anything. He did not move. Mother goat and her little goats quickly got away. When the wolf woke up, he stood up. His tummy hurt really bad. He thought to himself that it was because he ate too many goats, because his tummy was full of rocks. He got really thirsty. He came next to the river to drink some water, but when he was walking, the rocks were hitting each other. My tummy feels so heavy and full. It's as if all the goats I ate turned into rocks. He wanted to kneel down and drink some water. Due to the rocks being so heavy, he lost his balance and slipped into the water. Oh! Help! Help me! I'm drowning! Help! Yelled out for help, but no one helped him. He could not bear the weight of the rocks any more and went under into deep waters. When they saw what happened, Mother Goat and her little goats ran to the river. The wolf is dead! Yippee! The wolf is dead! The wolf is dead! Yippee! Yippee! Hand in hand, they all started to dance and jump around. From that day on, Mother Goat and her seven little goats had a peaceful and happy life in their cottage in the forest. Once upon a time, there was a forest where only animals lived, and no humans ever entered. Although they were all different from each other, all the animals lived in peace. They all had different characteristics. For example, the monkey was the naughty one, the chipmunk was the wuss, the lion was the brave. The gazelle was the fast. The turtle was the slow. The fox was the cheeky one, and the bees were the hardworking ones. The only one that no animal in the forest could get along with was the arrogant crow. The crow did not like to share his food. Sometimes he even stole food from the other animals and flew away. All the animals were talking about this selfish crow, and that he needed to be taught a lesson. Being the cheekiest and the smartest one, the fox made the first comment. You guys leave it up to me. I will do such a trick on that selfish crow. He won't be able to be an arrogant snob anymore. One day, the crow went into the city to look for food, and he returned to the forest with a big chunk of cheese in his mouth, and rested. On a branch, watching from afar, the fox decided to make a move to take the cheese out of the crow's mouth. The fox came next to the tree on which the crow was resting. At that moment, the crow was picking on the cheese that he put on the branch. Hi there, my friend. What is it that you're eating? I've never seen something like that. Ah. They call it cheese. The humans eat this. Hmm. I'm curious about its taste. Would you share some with me? Ah, no way. Do you know how far I had to fly to get this cheese? So what? One day I will share my food with you, and we'll be even. And why would I care about your filthy food? This cheese is very special. You can find it any time you want. 
Whatever he said, the fox could not convince the crow to share his food. The fox was smart, but the crow was just as smart. So this time, the fox made another plan. Okay, okay, have your cheese. I don't want it. But at least let me come next to you and have a look at this very special cheese that you don't want to share. When the fox started to climb up the tree, the crow took the cheese in a panic and flew to another branch. This time, the fox went under the other tree where the crow was, but the crow had no intention to share his food. The fox gave it a little thought and came up with another plan. What are the most important flaws of the crow? He's self-conscious and arrogant. Maybe I should take advantage of these to get that food from him. Hey, my friend, do you know why I really came down here? To prevent losing the cheese in his mouth, he asked without opening up his beak. What? I have heard that you have the most beautiful voice in the forest, and apparently when you sing, all animals watching get mesmerized. When the crow heard this, he fluffed his feathers and started to look very sure of himself. Sing me a song so that I can hear the magnificent voice of yours and tell about it to my friends. The fox finally found the crow's weakest points. Finally, when the self-loving crow opened his mouth, the cheese in his mouth fell down and of course the fox was right there to catch it. The crow was stunned, motionless. Oh, look at this now. Your precious cheese just fell into my mouth. And man, it tastes good. Due to his arrogance and self-consciousness, the crow lost his food to the fox. So, my friend, what did we learn? You should not think of yourself much bigger than you actually are. You shouldn't believe everything you hear. You shouldn't go around saying I'm the best. And don't forget, there are always greater minds. After he finished his words, the fox walked away and was now lost in the deep forest. From that day on, the crow gave up being arrogant and selfish. He always had good relations with all the other animals and always shared his food. Once upon a time, there was a little ox living in the farm by a lake. This little ox was very unhappy because he was much smaller than all the other oxes in the farm. He always complained about it. And yes, once again, he was complaining to his friend, the dog. I am the smallest ox on the farm. In fact, I am sure that I am the smallest in the world. And there's nothing I can do to change this. Don't start again, my friend. You're actually, in fact, a pretty big, clever and cute ox. It's impossible for us all to be the same size, right? Yes, we don't have to be all the same size. But why am I not the biggest? Look, I am not the biggest dog in the world. I am sure that somewhere there is a bigger dog than me. But I do not worry about this. I am happy with who I am. But I am not. lake right next to the farm where our unhappy ox lived, there lived a very self-centered frog. This frog loved to brag about himself next to his friends. He was bigger than all the other frogs and he was proud of this. I am the biggest frog in this lake and whoever is the biggest is the king. From now on, everybody has to call me my king. There is no rule that says the biggest will be the king. And actually, we don't need a king. Why not? Every place has a king. For example, the lion is the king of the jungle. Yes, but the lion is not the biggest animal in the jungle. There is the elephant, for example. Our self-centered frog had to think about his answer and then answered back, bragging as always. This is not the jungle, and you are not elephants. I am the king, and that is it. 
the other frogs had talked amongst themselves. They had to teach this frog a lesson. But they didn't know what to do. One day, when the frogs were swimming in the lake, they saw the ox eating away, sadly, on the other side of the lake. Never in their life had they seen an animal this big. Wow, what a big animal! Right at that moment, they thought of an idea. Well, doesn't our self-centred frog say that the biggest animal is the king? Then this must be the king! The frogs immediately went next to the ox. They told him about the situation and asked for help. Yes, but I'm just a little ox. What can I do for you? Little who, you? You won't need to do a thing. We will bring a friend of ours that is very much in love with himself and you leave the rest up to us. Okay, but now I have to get back to the farm or the farmer will worry. following day, the frogs went over next to the frog that was very much in love with himself. They mentioned that there was a giant animal on the other side of the lake. He wants to see you! Okay then, let's go over and see who this giant animal is. The frogs went over to the other side of the lake. The ox was waiting for them on the edge of the lake. The frog, who was very much in love with himself, almost swallowed his small tongue, mm -hmm. but did not make anything obvious to his friends. So, you're the giant that wants to be the king of this lake. The ox wanted to say something, but... Uh, mm -hmm. In a hurry, the female frog answered. Weren't you the one that said, whoever is the biggest will be king? Seeing as though the ox is bigger, then it's his right to be king. Oh yeah? I can be as big as him. Right. And how so? When the frogs were talking amongst themselves, the self-centered ox thought of himself to be super big and worthy. Because this was the first time someone was mentioning how big he was. Now you will see how I will grow. And so the frog began to inflate. Am I as big as the ox? Uh, uh, uh. The frog inflated himself a little bit more. What? what do you think? Am I as big as the ox? Uh, uh, uh. The frog began to inflate himself once again. Now he was not able to talk. He could only stare with his eyes waiting for assurance. All the other frogs began to laugh. <laughs> no, you can't do it. No, you're not that big. Inflate a little more. <laughs> the frog continued to inflate. He inflated and inflated and turned into a balloon. With his amazed gaze, the ox stared at the frog. <laughs> the very inflated frog had blown up so big he no longer looked like a frog. He pushed so hard that eventually he began to float and started to go up. Eventually he reached as high as the ox, but he needed to pass the ox. With some more effort, he blew up a bit more and went higher. And and the frogs just stood there, staring. This was a very tough lesson. They were all really sad about what had happened to the frog who thought of himself to be bigger than anyone else. And so, after seeing all that had happened, never ever did the little ox complain again. He accepted himself as he is and was happy with it. <laughs>